Hey guys, welcome back to Aurora Graphics. Uh, this week I think I'm going to show everybody a little bit about how I set up my Photoshop, uh, the color space that we work in and why, and then address a couple of problems. We had a customer call in today uh, with some issues printing green when it was supposed to be a grayscale image. And I'm going to show you some of the things that we do around here to try to combat uh, color issues when you're printing. Uh, so the first thing, uh, this this is Aurora Borealis. This is one of our new images that uh, we just uploaded to the site. Um, these abstract images are, are pretty cool, and once you learn how to change color on them and, and how to play with them, they really are uh, extremely usable. You can do a lot of different things with these type of graphics, from commercial stuff to to any kind of wild and crazy wraps and things like that. So um, the first thing I'll, I'll show you is what I put my color settings at and so under edit click color settings and you'll probably be defaulting to to this setting here and you're going to want to change that to adobe rgb 1998 and the entire reason why you want to do that is because all of the people who create print profiles for the wide format uh, printers that we all use in the in the vinyl industry they all use adobe rgb 1998 to create those profiles and so if you also work in that custom or that workspace, uh, you will be as close to accurate as you can be using the profiles that they created. Um, a lot of people think that you need to work in CMYK because you have a CMYK printer. You know, you put cyan, magenta, black, and yellow in the printer, but that's, uh, that's actually not the case. The, the print software, uh, the RIP, will convert your RGB image into CMYK on the fly and the conversion process that they use will actually give you a lot more color um, choices like you'll get more cardinal reds and you'll get more bright yellows and more good looking blues and things like that if you design an RGB and allow it to convert it on the fly if you design strictly in CMYK you're going to limit yourself to that amount of color choices and so rather than mess with any of the you know going back and forth to CMYK and this and that I set mine to Adobe RGB 1998 and then down here where you've got color management policies just set it to always convert to working RGB and uh, with CMYK and grayscale that really doesn't matter uh, I don't use it so it's really unimportant you can actually make it ask you when you open up and I go ahead and let it ask me and that way I know what kind of color management is in the file before I ever even start messing with it. So uh, then once you've got that taken care of, we'll just click OK. And then we're going to come over here to uh, Preferences. And if you go to the General tab, then you can check all of these out at once. Um, just real fast, I'm going to kind of get through this. Um, I never scale an image up. If I have, I'll show you guys tricks in the future about how to do this, but I, I will manipulate the image to make it larger if possible or choose another image before I will blow something up. Um, and so what I do is this image interpolation is, is actually going to, like a bicubic is just a regular um, scaling. So when you, you like try to shrink an image down, you want to use bicubic sharper so it makes the image more crisp. And if when you blow an image up, you want to use bicubic smoother because it'll actually smooth the lines out that would get real jagged and stair steppy uh, when you started to blow something up. And so I always set it to bicubic sharper, and that's just going to be like when you're scaling an image within uh, a layered document or something like that. And it always just stays to this. Um, uh, history states you can set to anything if you have more RAM and you've got a ton of space on your computer like my new machine that I've talked about in the past I'll, I'll crank the history states up you know around 30 or so if you go 30 steps past where your intended place was and need to go back that far um, it's I, I don't know that's you really went the wrong direction for a long time and I would just get better at it but so it's really unnecessary to have that many and uh, like I say, if you load down your computer with a ton of the history states, um, it'll, it'll really bog you down. So just kind of keep that in mind. Um, I use lowercase. I, didn't, I don't really change any of this stuff whenever it's coming in here. Enable the large document format. You'll want to do that, especially if you're working on like a city bus or something like that. And this PSB 
is like the large version of a PSD, which I think is uh, limited in scale somewhat. So uh, just go ahead and en enable that. Um, I like to use a full-size brush tip. That way you know exactly where the edge of your, your tip is. And then I also show the crosshair in the brush tip. If you use the standard paintbrush, it's really about impossible to tell what you're doing. Uh, precise, again, you can tell exactly where the center is really nice and easily, but it's uh, difficult to tell exactly where you're going to be. So if you use the full-size brush tip, show crosshair, you kind of cover all the bases. Uh, again, this isn't bad for the eyedroppers things like that but I prefer to have a more precise tool so transparency and gamut I don't mess with that that's just pretty much the transparent uh, checkerboard pattern that you get when you don't have a background on your image um, with the units and rulers I again I I don't ever mess with that I the print resolution uh, new document preset resolutions it'll actually preset to whatever the document that you copied is so if there's something on your clipboard it'll preset to that so really this isn't real important to mess with uh, guides and grid slices again if you want to change the color of your guides that you can drag out of these rulers um, you can do that I prefer to just leave it uh, plugins and scratch discs this is kind of important if you've got a uh, extra hard drives on your computer which this one obviously doesn't you'll be able to choose those drives as your scratch disks rather than using um, the C drive or, or whatever your operating system's loaded to. The, the whole idea there is that the program's running from one drive and all the information is getting written to another one so you don't you, you've got a little bit more speed there. Um, memory and cache again I would just leave this alone and unless you've got a really rocket computer and you're just going to be in Photoshop then you can crank it up quite a bit for the memory and usage um, so that's again it's going to depend on your computer and uh, font preview size I like to make it large just so that it's real easy to tell exactly what the letters look like and that's going to be under your character here how big those display so with that done we'll just click OK and so now you should be set up every time you open up an image in, in uh, Photoshop if, it, if it's not set to Adobe RGB and uh, hasn't had any color management. Some of our images haven't had color management applied to them. They're still in their raw form um, because they just came out of a 3D program and there was no need to, to start messing with it. So I'll show you here real quick. Under image adjustments to, to start messing with color in here and um, get going with this type of thing, I'll show you real fast. Hue and saturation here under image adjustments, that's going to allow you to change these different colors of this image. Uh, really quickly and easily. You literally just grab the slider and start moving it until you get the color that you want. Now if you have to exactly match a color, we'll have to get into that another later, at a later date, but for the most part, if you need to change it to pink or, or blue or green or anything like that, you can do that with this, this hue tool here. Um, as far as the uh, saturation goes, if you'd like to take all the color out of this, like for instance with our customer we were discussing earlier, he was trying to print something that was supposed to be gray and when you take it outside and look at it it's it's got a green tint to it and um, that's because your printer is deriving gray from a process print it's actually spraying cyan magenta yellow and black to get a gray color and so if that's if those ratios of those different types of ink are off at all it's going to stray in one direction uh, typically it goes green and that's about the last color you want when you're trying to get a chrome look you know blues are okay this and that so um, what you can do to test the image to make sure that it's the you know to kind of narrow down where you need to fix the problem whether the problems with uh, you know your print profile or maybe it's the 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 choice of vinyl you know I'm, it, it, it really could be a, a lot of different things but to eliminate the image immediately so that you don't have to worry about that and, and start narrowing it down. The first thing you can do is just take the saturation completely to zero or minus 100. And if you look here, there is absolutely no color within the image now. It's all black and white. You can also play with the lightness here, but uh, this is on a global scale. So it's really better not to use this type of tool unless you've got uh, some specific look. If you're really trying to ghost something, um, 
make it real, real subtle. You may be able to use this tool, but for the most part, I don't mess with it. So uh, if you don't want to take all the color out, you can, you can just simply take the saturation down. If you go up with it, you notice you start to get real harsh looking color changes. It does, it, it'll, like, it'll literally get rid of your gradient where it fades from like a black to a, a blue or something like that and start to put a bunch of grainy, pixely looking places on the image. Here, I'll zoom in. You can probably see that right in here. And as I drag the, the saturation slider back down, see how that nasty is going away? And then when we get to the, the zero point, you can tell the, uh, the, the bad looking, you know, the, the harshness of what we did is no longer there. So I'm just going to click OK with that. Actually, let's, let me show you something else real quick. Uh, if, you, if you take the saturation all the way down out of your image like this and then click OK, this is a cool little trick. Uh, what you can do is actually go image adjustments and uh, invert. And inverting an image is actually going to take the white and turn it black and the black and turn it white. So if you actually would like this design in a lighter color, you know, with the, the white background and but still the same image, um, you can really easily do that. And that's a, a cool trick to take some of the abstract things that we have and reuse them on a future job and make it look so much different that no one is even able to tell that it's the same image. So, uh, and then if you want to come back in here, you can also go to the same exact tool. And if you check this colorize box, you can start putting color back into the image, changing the hue like this. So, there's a couple of different ways to, to change the image there. Let's go back into the tool. Control U pulls up this box, by the way. So if we go back to colorize, let's go take our saturation to 50, dead center. Like I say, if you go too far, you can start to make the, the harsh, nasty come back out of the image. So uh, I wouldn't take it much past the 50 mark. Uh, you can zoom in and, and make sure that if, if you do decide you're going to go a little further. Um, that, that you're not destroying the image because it will start looking bad pretty quickly. And I'm just going to click OK. And you notice we've got color in our image here. So if I go back to our image adjustments and do the invert again, it actually jumped across the color wheel. If you can imagine a, an actual circle of color where it fades from red, green, blue, uh, all the way around. So, and I can just get my uh, the color picker out of here. And show you so if we jumped across from red red is obviously here directly opposite that on the color wheel is going to be halfway back to red so it would change it to aqua and same with vice versa like if you had a yellow it's going to put it here in the purple so just a little a couple of quick tips on how to change color and that'll take a, a lot of the the abstract images that we produce and give you a lot of versatility with them um, a lot of people have trouble with um, the, the color choices that we put out there. But the fact that it's so easy to change, uh, the only reason that, that we honestly even put color choices up there is for people who just don't have software that will change color. If you don't own Photoshop, then uh, you're probably not going to be able to get it done easily at all. But if you do own it, there's so many ways to play with color in this program that it's just um, it's unreal. But... Anyway, guys, that, that does it for the, the part one of color. Um, there's going to be quite a few videos in this series. I'm probably going to make a playlist based on uh, just color techniques and things like that. Um, it's one of the broadest subjects I've ever dealt with or even researched. So um, we're going to have uh, several videos coming up on how to do that. Uh, we'll also be running a discount, I believe, beginning of next month. Uh, so keep your eyes out for the email that we've got there. If you sign up at our website, auroragraphics.net, and like us on Facebook, um, subscribe to the videos. You'll start getting our tutorial emails and also updates on any videos we put up and then also the discounts that we're running. Shortly, I've been talking to Dave, the owner here. He's, he's talking about doing a giveaway of some kind, maybe a, a DVD or a, a, a single image, something like that, where we're going to draw from our different subscribers. And I think we'll do that live. So 
keep an eye out for that also. And uh, thanks again for joining us. We'll see you next time.